This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, May the 27th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Augustine of Canterbury. He was a Benedictine monk in the 6th century who became the first Archbishop of Canterbury at the end of his life in 597 AD. He's broadly considered the founder of English Catholicism. He did all of that without being born in England or even arriving there until A.D. 595. He was actually Italian and was sent by Pope Gregory the Great as the leader of the so-called Gregorian Mission to convert England, which he did. Augustine died today in 604 A.D. Well, today in 1917, Pope Benedict XV did something remarkably unique in world history. He published a code of canon law. We take for granted nowadays that the teachings of the church are accurately printed in the catechism and the rules of the church are accurately and entirely printed in the code of canon law. The latest catechism was printed in 1993 and the latest code of canon law was published in 1983. But prior to the 1917 Codex Juris Canonici, there was the Corpus Juris Canonici, aka the body of canon law. It was an ephemeral name for the collection of documents, opinions, canonical rulings, councils, papal publications, and what have you that was interpreted by experts to be official at any given time in any given place as the legal policy of the church. No wonder that bishops were almost always chosen from those with degrees in canon law because they were the only ones who could figure out what bishops were supposed to do and not do. The 1917 code was remarkable because it meant that anyone could, with a little training, a little vocabulary, develop a fairly complete understanding of the law of the Catholic Church. It was all there in one book, in one language, using consistent terminology and consistent editorial practice. It's hard to describe how earth-shattering this document was for the Catholic Church. Today is the birthday in 1837 of folk hero Wild Bill Hickok. Hickok was from rural Illinois, which was rife with vigilante justice. He was in trouble constantly, and when he came of age, he was already a fugitive. He got a job as a stagecoach driver and headed west. He did a lot of things over the following decade. He was a spy for the Union Army. He was a scout and a marksman for a bit. He was an actor. And then he became a professional gambler. All the while, he was a gunfighter and a pretty good marksman. He spent some time as the marshal of various frontier towns and ended up in Deadwood in modern-day South Dakota. He was a notorious self-promoter and, let's be honest, a liar. Most of the tales he told about himself are almost certainly false. But no one can tell the truth from the lies, and so Wild Bill remains one of those people of whom tales will be told. And finally today, in 1922, English actor and horror icon Christopher Lee, CBE, CSTJ, was born in the Belgravia region of London to well-to-do parents. He was a World War II vet, and on returning from the war, he wanted to do something big. He worked with some of the biggest names in film and stage, and in the late 1950s, he was cast as Count Dracula for Hammer Productions. For 10 years, he was the centerpiece of Hammer's horror productions. You'll have heard me talk about Hammer before because they reinvented horror in the 60s and 70s, and Christopher Lee was at the center of that reinvention. In the 2000s, he was cast as Saruman in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings series and then as a major villain in the Star Wars franchise reboot. He was a prolific actor and philanthropist and all-around lover of film. He has become an icon in every way, and he died just before his 93rd birthday in 2015. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.